Hello and welcome to my first 40k video for YouTube. Yes, yes, celebrate. Excellent, thank you. Who am I? I'm nobody right now. So why am I talking about 40k? How long have I been playing? A little bit about me. This, yes, right here, my first 40k figure also making its debut. Uh, ba -bam. If you don't know what that figure is, you got something to look up. After that, my first real squads that I had in 40k. Whoop. And finally, well, almost, what my nids look like. Here's one of my Hermagon slash Gene Steelers. Yes, I used green stuff on the head. And finally, now, this is the box my first 40K army came in. Yes, it is. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Yes. So that's enough about me. Oh, and yes, I have the codex. Yes, it's still shrink wrapped because most of the time I use the e codexes. Not a big fan of carrying around books and post it notes and flipping through pages during a game. I just have everything right there. Click a button. It's it's in your face. And for everybody else. It's 2014, people. If you don't have a phone or a tablet or some other way of looking up stuff faster than flipping through a book, upgrade. <clears throat> Today's video is about the Tyranids. A very quick video about the Tyranids, and I'm just going to do an overview of the army right now. I plan on making a video on each of the different types of choices that you can have, but this one, I'm just talking about the Tyranids in general, and I have to say, I'm impressed. I like it. I think the Rules Boys and GW in itself worked very hard on this and did a fantastic job. And what I'm most impressed with them about this is they knew, they knew their video is going to piss people off all over. There will be people with just fire coming out of their heads. Just fire. Boom! What are you thinking? They were going to be there with people with just smoke coming out of their ears when they get this video. They're going to see the loss of the Ignarl, Ignarl uh, 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 Gene Stealers. They're going to see the loss of the Malatai. And they know this is going to piss people off, at least for the first, because I think these things are going to come back in um, in future supplements, but for now, when they see that those are gone, they knew it was going to be pissing people off. So, good job, GW. You didn't let that stop you. Yeah, you, you, you didn't just cave in to, like, the Eternal Warrior request, which, personally, I think would have made the Tyranids into uh, a 5th edition Necrons. It would be a one-trick pony army. Uh, everybody would have to play this one way, and nothing else would, would really matter or, or be comparable to it. So what you have done with making the Tyranids an army of adaptation is great. What do I mean by adaptation? I mean that in tournament play, mostly, when I make my army list, I try to prepare for everything. I try to prepare for every contingency imaginable. I need to be ready for night fight. I need to be ready for uh, death company. I need to be ready for psychers. I need to be ready for space marines and demons and tau and all of the different scenarios. And now you need to be ready for flyers and fortifications. The Tyranids, from my reading and experience with playing, are the masters of adaptation, which is what they should be, because they're Tyranids. They adapt. 
they are also the masters of fear. Sorry, um, Chaos players. Tyranids, scariest army in the game. Uh, both rules-wise, in terms of having figures that cause fear, and, as you can see later in my other videos, playing against them. So, when I say adaptation, I mean that all of the pieces, all of the models, especially the generals, fit together perfectly. They remove the randomness from army design in terms of uh, warlord trait rules and things like that. So each warlord, each HQ, comes with a fixed warlord trait, predetermined warlord trait, allowing you then to build an entire army around that. And if you take two HQs, you can do that twice. Well, not two warlord traits, but they tend to have HQs that come with a fixed warlord trait and then another HQ, which instead of using a warlord trait, just comes with an innate ability, which I will go into later. But right now, I have to say, that's the thinking that you have to have around the Tyrid now. You have to think adaptability. You have to think uh, change to whatever you're facing is their greatest strength. And this is my brief overview of them. I like to keep my videos to 10 minutes, I've decided, and there was no way for me really to have done that and give a good overview of the each individual unit. So I just wanted to do this brief introduction of what I thought of the Codex. Um, I really like it. I really, really like it. I think it is definitely the most artfully and thought out codex that I've read so far in terms of the amount of synergy that you really need to get with the figures uh, it, it, it's just like I said without going into all of the details it's it's just amazing and I look forward to sharing the rest of that with you in my next video which will be about HQ choices Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.